Hey guys, Sarah here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this, wherever it is, um, with Inkscape. We are creating seamless pattern tiles for use in things like fabric printing and uploading to print-on-demand sites like Redbubble. Okay, so stick around. I'm going to be taking you through the whole, pr whole process from uploading, um, you know, collecting your artwork, uploading your artwork to Inkscape, creating the pattern tile, and then exporting it in a format that you can use. So please subscribe. I post a lot about anything about creating fabric, creating fabric patterns. Um, so using um, Inkscape, Critter, Procreate to create those patterns and then uploading them to things like um, Redbubble and also printing out fabric to make some clothes. <laughs> um, I also do like t-shirt designs and all sorts of stuff that are very arty and stuff um, actually on fabric as well. I also paint. I have another channel. I'll leave a link below. Anyway, so please stick around, subscribe, hit me a like and um, leave a comment below if there's anything else you want to know about. Anyway, let's get started. Hey guys, so um, like I just said, we are today creating a um, seamless pattern using the Inkscape uh, Seamless Pattern Helper uh, function. It's the new version of Inkscape 1.0. It's free to download. Just go to Inkscape and um, download it for your uh, version of your computer. So. Um, as I said, we're creating a seamless pattern that I use to print out fabric or many people use to put on Redbubble um, and other print-on-demand sites. So rather than just creating the t-shirt image, you're creating a uh, pattern that is tileable and goes across a large area from one small little square. So for example, this one here um, starts out looking just like that. That's the thing and it, and it, um, and it tiles or replicates so you can see the other, other end of the bag is um, over on the other side of the page and top to bottom works as well. So I'm just going to quickly start by showing you where I get my um, images from. Just shutting this door. Okay, restarting because my husband just came through. So I start off by showing you where I um, get my images from. So I use a fantastic site called Creative Fabrica. Um, I have a subscription and I hate subscriptions. So for me to have a subscription to something, it's good. Trust me, this place is amazing. Um, I'll leave a link down below. I do get an affiliate um, uh, kickback if you subscribe for my link. So if you're going to, please, please do so. Um, but I wouldn't recommend it if I don't love it. It is absolutely amazing. Hands down, the best um, graphic site that I use for what I need it for. So it's amazing. They have fantastic licenses, fantastic products. So um, this is where I got my um, uh, designs from for today. Uh, their um, licenses are really good. So unlike a lot of the sites, you can't use them for print on demand. A lot of the license sub conditions say, do not use for print on demand, but Creative Fabrica's licenses do allow you. If you get the, um, he'll just pop into here for a second. Uh, for a full pod license, um, you can um, uh, just buy a little bit extra and get the full pod license. I have the subscription, so um, it's included for me for a lot of products, so which, that's really fantastic. But like always, check the terms and conditions to make sure it's suitable for what you do. Um, you might think you're never going to get caught, but the likelihood of that you possibly can. It's very easy for designers to reverse image search their images and start creating lawsuits and fines and all sorts of dramas for you. So it's just not worth the risk. Make sure I'm very careful. And these days I actually, when I download my products, I actually put them into folders, which tells me what license I have for them. So um, that's how I uh, do that. And then all you need to do um, with your artwork here is you add it to cart, download it, and um, you know it comes up down here. You click on it and you extract all the files to a particular um, spot in your um, in your computer that you want it to be. Alrighty. So that being said, for Creative Fabrica, I am just going to pop into Inkscape. Here was just uh, something else I was playing with before. We're going to go to File. We're going to go to New from Template, and you're just going to click down to Seamless Pattern here. 
we're going to change the custom width to 2000 by 2000 pixels and I am going to create from template. Okay. Now I have just done another um, video concurrently with this one, I've just filmed it just before, where I talk about the export and why it comes up at 96 to start off with, which is not suitable for, um, suitable for print, but we can fix that a little bit later on. And um, I'll show you some other options at the end for how to, how to sort that out. Sometimes you might need to make your original design bigger so it shrinks down to the correct DPI at the size you want it. Um, and sometimes you can do a couple of other things, but just have that in mind. Um, when you're going through this, you might need to go back and have another look at the video to see how that goes. So here we are in our um, new Inkscape. Please make sure you save it. Inkscape, look, it's a free program and it is absolutely amazing, but it has a habit of crashing. There we go. So we're in here. Down here you have your different layers. So this is the one that shows you how to position things and this is the export button. So that tells you that at the moment this is 2000 pixels wide at 96 dpi, which isn't very good quality. So it comes out at about 52.9 um, centimeters. So those 2000 dots are split into the 52 mm -hmm. centimeters. If we um, squish it down to 300 dpi, that um, those 2000 pixels are gonna be squashed down into 16 centimeters. But I'll show you another way to deal with that as well. Anyway, like I said, I'll show you one way to, um, to deal with that. And then your layers. So it comes pre-populated with your layers. So I'm just gonna hit the little um, minus button on the keyboard there just to show you how this how this works so it comes up like this and it's a seamless patterns user layers pattern foreground pattern background so it's these ones here under the help layer um, to uh, move things around so i'm just going to click on pattern foreground and i'm going to delete these so you can see how this image even though it appears whole here is split across the two different um, functions and there's a spot in the middle make sure you don't um, get rid of that um, at all and so you're going to design in this square which you can increase the size and it's going to turn it into a seamless pattern for you which is amazing so we're just going to start with the background um, and I'm going to choose a color for my background which is going to be this now if you are just creating a colored background and it's not transparent or anything like that. You don't need to do anything more with this, but if you're doing anything else on the background that is seamless or uh, needs to be seamless or has any other designs on it, you're gonna to need to follow these steps. So click on here, click on your, on your background. You need to change it to the same size as the, um, as, the, as the square. Click on the align and distribute and align center vertically and center horizontally to make sure it is in the center. And then if you pop over here, you'll have a look and you'll see that the entire um, surface is covered. And it would be covered, to kingdom come, with um, that pink. So that's what we want. I am also in this background. Make sure you're in the background here. Uh, that just affects the layering. Um, and we can turn this off and we can lock it as well, which is what we're going to do in a minute. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Import. Oh, this is the images that we're going to be using. I did get them ready and then um, we need these other ones first. A digital curie, fantastic, fantastic place. Uh, if you have um, a chance to go and look at her artwork, I highly recommend it. I use these quite regularly. So I'm just going to choose a seamless gold star um, overlay. You click open and now hold your cursor in the center of that square. Um, if you have your cursor anywhere off on your screen, you know, looking about at things while you're waiting for it to import, um, that image will import somewhere crazy and you won't find it again and you just have to control Z and redo it. Trust me, it's just the easiest way. It can take a little while, particularly since I've got a few things running on my computer I'm uploading to YouTube and doing a few things at the same time. So um, it's the reason why we do save on Inkscape. It is a little bit prone at times to crashing and that would probably be my only fault um, really to do with Inkscape. I, you know, it does tend to, does tend to crash a little bit. Okay, let's see if I just click them on. I have indeed. Here we go. So I'm going to make this uh, 2000 by uh, 2000. 
And this one here, I'm just going to realign and distribute because I have obviously knocked it off kilter doing whatever else I was doing. Re-click on this and I'm going to align and align. And I now should have a seamless repeat, as you can see here, if we were to zoom in, if the computer is going to let me, we have a, um, a seamless repeat of a background with a, um, a seamless background pre-prepared square over um, over the top excuse those little white lines that sometimes appear um, if you're certain that this is correct and this isn't you know 1999 and 2000 or something up here um, that should should print out correct and I'll show you how to check that a little bit later on now what I'm going to do on my layer stocker here is I'm actually going to lock the background so I can't accidentally shift any of those squares around and bugger up the tiling um, by bringing in my artwork. So I'm just going to do that lock. It means I can't do anything with it. You can turn it on and off as well for um, anything else you might need to do. I'm going to click to the pattern foreground. Just going to zoom back in here. And we're going to import. So file import just as we were before. Um, I don't know if I show that bit specifically. We're going to go into this other download. So as I said to you before, um, my downloads are under full pod licenses. So these are things that I'm allowed to use for pod, print on demand. It's just a, the highest level license. So um, I've paid a little bit more for these designs, but um, that's what I want. So I'm going to uh, import um, what we want to import. So might as well just start, I guess, at the beginning. Make sure you hold your cursor over the middle again, otherwise it just imports somewhere crazy. I'm just going to re-put on my baby monitor because it's turned off. I've got the little one home. She's sick. She has bronchiolitis and she's been very poorly. So if I have to stop halfway through, don't be surprised if I have to come back later tonight and the lighting will have changed by then. Anyway. Okay, so we're just going to import all of these. I will speed this little bit up because I don't think you need to see me importing all of these. So I'll see you in a couple minutes. Okay, so here what I've done is I've just imported all the artwork. In the other um, other way of doing seamless patterns in Inkscape, you can import all these designs off onto the side of the page and you can drag them in and drag them out and it makes it a little bit easier. This you actually have to physically put on the page, which is a little bit painful because um, if you put them over here, they're a little bit more challenging to grab and they disappear and it's just a little bit more awkward. So what we're going to do now is we're going to manipulate these around the... Um, around the field and I'm going to show you a little bit and then I'm just going to zip ahead and uh, fast forward all through this. Um, so what you want to do is you can see over here, actually let's save this before it has kittens. They have kittens. Um, if you see not responding at the top of the screen that happens quite regularly just sit back take a deep breath and hope you've saved it. Okay so there we go if it's just not responding okay so as you can see here we've got all our images in and they're all just sort of centered in the middle you can see all this space around the outside edge which is not very attractive or um you know very useful for what we want to do so I'll just zoom back in to our design and i'm going to move some of these off uh off the edge of the off the edge of the page and what it will do is it will bring them in you can see how this book has been then split over um, the different edges so what should be here is here and what should be here is moved to here um, and all around the page and that way this is going to create a, um, a a seamless a seamless pattern for us and i'm going to go ahead and have a little bit of a play and get this into a more pleasing arrangement a couple of things you can do um, if you hit control you can resize things okay um, you can uh, click and drag. If you click again, these arrows will turn up. 
Oopsie do. And uh, you can um, control and sort of drag it around. Control keeps the dimensions the same. Uh, so you don't stretch it out too much. The other thing you can do, which is really useful, say, um, uh, if you've got something that you want to, you know, if you want to mirror, so this lamp perhaps, let's, let's do that. You can control C and control V, just like you would on a, um, somewhere else. And you can, oh, new Inkscape, I've forgotten they've used their, um, Flip selected objects horizontally. I much prefer the old, the old pictures in Escape. I prefer the old pictures, and then that mirrors it that way. Um, if you also wanted to, you could also mirror things that way. But obviously, I'm just creating a one-way design for this. Um, and the other thing you can do is Control D, which is duplicate, and you'll end up with a second, um, a second copy. So I'm going to go ahead and have a little bit of a play. You'll see. Um, You'll see over here that the pattern is starting to come out and you'll see that, you know, even though this is split here, um, it's whole here. So I'm just going to go ahead and we're just going to have a little bit of a play and get this into a more, um, more pleasing arrangement. So let's fast forward this bit, you don't need to see it. <laughs> Sorry guys. I'll be Okay folks, well obviously it's um several hours later now, that little um interruption of my baby having pulled off all her clothes and her nappy at the end of her nap. Took a little while and then school and dinner and don't get back in here when she's yeah, annoying and running around. Anyway, um, so there we are. Um, just managed to move that there for you a little bit more. So as you can see with the pattern, um, having um, having it here, you can see very clearly where you've got like little gaps and things in your in your pattern. So um, you can just say, oh, okay, I've um got a spot here and I have told people I'm filming and they need to be quiet and no they're not anyway um, you can see here that there is a, um, a little bit of a gap so if we go just to the right hand side of the um, here there's a little bit of a gap and I am going to put um, that in there So I will um, fast forward again and come back when I think I have um, popped enough little things in here. Let's get back to where we were. So as I said, I'm just fiddling around and um, popping in a few things um, else where I want them to go. So... 
<sighs> okay, all right guys, so um, what I've got here is the completed pattern. Um, obviously, um, it's a very quick pattern and if I'd spent some more time on it, I could probably make that look a little bit nicer, but that's what we're going with today, just so I can give you a little bit of an example as to what we need to do next. Um, so I strongly suggest that we give it a good old save again, um, because these things often go, often go awry. Um, with Inkscape when you're exporting and doing all sorts of things, if you lose it, you're going to be really peeved. So let's just do that. There's a few gaps, but that's okay. So um, just looking at that now, you can see most of the things are, um, are covered. There's a couple, as I said, a couple of gaps, but we will, um, this is a tester. So we're going to go to the export button. Um, and you want to make sure very carefully that you have page selected. Um, if you select anything else, you'll notice the image size and the width and everything changing. That's because it's a different object that's being selected. So we want to hit page and that means that we're getting just the just the square um, with this one. And as you can see here, it's saying that it is, you know, 5 point or 5.3 centimeters and um, it is 2000 pixels at 96 dpi. And that's not, that's not a good enough resolution for what I want to do with it. So um, we have a couple, um, a couple of options. We can um, export it under the advanced tab by increasing the DPI down here to 300. Um, or we can increase the actual size of the image by changing that to 300 and you'll see that will change it. Um, the image width to um, 6253 um, and then that will mean that it will um, you'll have 6250 pixels in that 53 centimeter um, distance so that increases the density of it so rather than having um, 2000 pixels in that same distance you're going to have the 6250 so that that's why you get a better resolution because there's more dots more pixels um, per per inch which is what we want so I'm going to go ahead with that and export it so to export from Inkscape is a two-step process so we're going to hit export as make sure this is correct page and you've got that um, selected correctly and we're going to export that and I'm just going to go into here and I'm going to call this book test and we're just going to I'm just put it popping in these dimensions so we know um, at 300 dpi just so I know what we're doing and it saves it as a PNG which is um, what we want most of the places you're going to upload to are going to want a PNG some like a JPEG or a TIFF um, and then you think oh it's done no you actually have to physically click export otherwise it won't it won't work alrighty now um, I did have Redbubble already open and ready to go but it's somehow managed to close itself um, during this. So I use Redbubble quite a lot for testing designs as well, even things that I might not even be putting up onto um, up onto Redbubble itself because it puts the, the picture onto shirts and blankets and pillows so I can get an idea of what it's gonna what it's gonna look like. Um, so if you just want to use that and what I do is I add a new work. Now I copy an existing copy an existing work. The reason I do this is because I have um, uh, these set up as a um, because all the settings change so it turns it into a tileable um, thing. So I use that for when I've got a, a design like this. It's a seamless tile pattern and um, I just hit replace all images. I give it a second because my computer likes to have a little bit of a spack at this. And we're just going to find our image which should be here. There it is. We'll do that next. I'll show you how to check that in Critter, the um, uh, dimensions and things of the of, of the image. <clears throat> Upload complete and it just takes a little minute. Okay. 
as I said. There we go, and so there is our um, our image. Now, because this is um, set up for tiling designs, I have switched off the options to put it on t-shirts and things. And um, here you can see what it's going to look like on a shirt. I'm not quite sure who would buy that shirt, but there we go. Um, and just so you can see, that's it at its maximum. But you could reduce the um, reduce the scale of the design there, like like that. Um, and you could go ahead and have a look at phone case or cushions um, or a duvet um, and see what that's going to see what that's going to look like so you could increase the design on um, a duvet or decrease it um, just to see what you see what you like pop it on um, all sorts of things uh, books clocks you know I can see that on one of the you know the books or things like that um, coasters um, Masks again. You could change the, um, you know, the size on each of these. But I like to pull it into Redbubble as just um, a little bit of a bit of a test. Now we're just going to pop into Critter. Oops, you was Critter. There it is. And I'm um, just oh, that's my the image I was using for the last little wee video there. And if you go to Critter and hit Open, and we're just going to Book Test. And we'll just open that up. This opens up the image so you can um, so you can test it. We're just going to go up to image and properties and you can see there um, that it is 6250 pixels by resolution of um, 300. And if you just change up the scale here to um, centimeters you'll see that it is just a shade over 52 centimeters. So going quickly back there into um, Inkscape you'll see that it's 52 centimeters <laughs> Um, and uh, 6250 um, at 300 dpi. If you remember at 96 dpi this was 2000 pixels. Um, I'll just quickly show you over on the web. So here we are 6350 pixels um, at a resolution of 300 comes out at about 53 centimeters and if we change that down to 2000 at um, 96 you end up with the same um, the same picture over the same um, physical area, but the resolution isn't going to be as good. I hope that kind of helps. I'm sorry about <laughs> I'm having to redub over a couple of those um, uh, measurements because I was uh, the previous video I was working with a factor ten down, so I was working with uh, pictures that were two hundred pixels, so they were really quite small, and two thousand nine hundred five fifty. Anyway, sorry. Oops. Not a mistake I should make, but I was tired. I've been up all week with the um, up all week with the baby. Anyway, so um, that's just uh, how to check the um, check the size, and you can always do that once you know your measurements and your DPI and things. You can go into a calculator and have a look at that as well. So anyway, and so there we have it. That is how you create a. Um, uh, a seamless pattern using Inkscape. Now obviously over, oh sorry, I'll just zip back for like two seconds. Obviously for this, um, if you were going to upload this design, we would just hit the collections we wanted in, say that it's not got nudity in it. And, um, okay, don't know why it's done that. And um, hit save work and then it's uploaded onto, onto Redbubble. And you'd also need to change, because we used copy to work, you'd need to change all of your little wee um, designs and things that were in there. So that's the basic overview of this. And I'll just quickly go through the very, very basic workflow here. So it is um, make sure your designs are not copyright if you're going to be uploading them to a site. If you're just using it for your own personal um, personal use then that's that's completely fine but I still wouldn't upload um, copyright works to Redbubble to only print out something for you make sure you don't do that one either um, and definitely check your licenses to make sure what you've got is a, a print on demand license um, particularly also with Creative Fabrica there are um, a couple of sub clauses and things in there which say that you can use it if you're going to print on demand and you've changed it so um, like this would count as changing sort of you know these images we've mixed it in with a you know someone else's background we've put it in a um, seamless pattern we've changed things around um, so therefore we have changed it we haven't just taken you know this one particular image here and put it on the front of a mug 
and gone you know so we've done some something to it so there's a couple of licenses in there so one is a basic pod so if you change it you can use print on demand and the does everyone want me tonight and um the other one is uh a complete print on demand where you can just take whatever it is and print it directly as is so uh, make sure you check the particular license anyway so file new from templates um seamless pattern and then you go into your layers, go into your layers, remove your pattern foreground, um, create your pattern background, you can lock your pattern background, which is what we did. Then go file, import, and import all your designs, move them around, and then go to you know, make your pattern, do what you want to do with that, export, uh, make sure you're exporting at 300 dpi and as I said there's another video on that and I will be doing more videos and there's lots of other people that do videos explaining that um, and yeah that's it make sure though when you are in Inkscape that you know something I did wrong early on down at the bottom there's a zoom percentage and at the moment it's saying 18% and if we're going to zoom um, all the way in don't think that 100% zoom is the actual size of the size of the image or anything um, make sure you don't do that it's always a good idea to have a little bit of a zoom in on um, on your image and um, see if it's looking pixelated anywhere because sometimes if you've pulled in a design that is a um, not a very high quality and you've blown it up even more um, sometimes you can get one design that looks a little bit a little bit pixelated or if it's a like a hand-drawn one that you've blown up a lot it's going to become pixelated but if it's a um, a vector drawing it's not going to not going to do that and I'll explain that in another video so that's just the two different types of drawing styles that you can get so Inkscape is primarily a vector program and Critter actually kind of does a bit of both but I use it for my drawing so um, drawing side of things so anyway um, that's it and I will be doing some more videos on this and I'm hoping to get some of these um, fabrics printed out here down in Australia so I can actually show you. Um, I have got quite a few of my other ones printed from various various places and um, yeah anyway if anyone's got any questions or wants to know anything um, we'll let you know. Alright thanks guys. Okay, one final thing, and I'm super sorry. I'm um, just showing you a very quick program that you can use to test for seamlessness um, before you, you know uploading to anywhere else. And I go to this place here called Twirls Tile Tester. Um, just type in Twirls Tile Tester into your web browser. It's free, you don't have to download anything um, to do that. And we just navigate to, oh, we don't want that, we want icons. Um, navigate to where your, um, your image is. And I'm just going to click and drag over to here and click and drag onto here. And here you go. So it will show you the little boxes around there. That's your actual um, tile. And you can zoom. Okay, you can zoom right on in there and see if you've got any um, any errors. So you can scroll scroll around um, and have a have a little oopsie do can scroll around and have a little bit of a look to see if you've got any um, any errors and it will show up um, really nice and clearly on the on the big screen <coughs> me no end of um, no end of drama so anyway that's just testing in um, toilet style tester it's a really great little wee thing I think you can use PNG and um, JPEGs in there as well so that's really great okay.